This movie, The Pianist won three Oscars, and this movie is completely based on a true incident. We all probably waste food many times in our lives be it intentionally or unintentionally, but after watching this movie if you ever see food being wasted in front of you, it will surely disturb your conscience. And friends, if you are new in our channel, so please click the subscribe button. So without further ado, let's go to the main story of the movie. The time was 1939. Warsaw is a small city in Poland and this man's name is Vladislav Spilman. This person was a famous pianist of that time and he plays piano for radio. Spilman was playing the piano and then there was a loud explosion outside, but Spilman took it for granted because it was a normal part of their daily life. So he continues to play his piano. After some time a bomb fell on Spilman's building and injuring him slightly. Spilman gets a little scared and he runs out from there. There was a girl named Dorita, she waiting for him. This girl likes Spillman and Spillman also likes her. From there, Spillman went straight to his house and everyone in his house was preparing to leave this residence, they will leave this house and go somewhere else. Because, Spillman and his entire family member were Jewish. They were moving from one city to another to keep their identity hidden. Because, the Germans would kill the Jewish people if they saw them. Spillman refuses to go with his family, he says, I want to stay in this city. Meanwhile, it was announced on the radio that the Britain and France would attack Germany together, and very soon they will reach Poland. Spillman and his family members were overjoyed to hear the news but their happiness does not last long. German soldiers moved into their area, and the soldiers continued to announce that, Every Jewish had to put a batch on their hands so that they can be easily identified. They cannot even go to shopping malls or restaurants. German soldiers destroyed all the radio stations there. As a result, Spillman no longer has a job. But because he is a good pianist so he gets a job in a restaurant with a false identity. The next day, he went to meet that girl named Dorita. When they go to a restaurant they find that Jewish are not allowed entering the restaurant. Dorita tells Spillman, then let's go to the park. Spillman tells her, we are not allowed in the park either, so they are forced to spend their time in the streets. The next day, a new announcement came from the German army, they state that, all Jewish people must live in a certain area, so everyone is forced to leave their home and head towards that particular area. The city had a large Jewish population while the new area was much smaller. After a few days, Spillman's family ran out of money so Spillman sold his piano at a very low price. They left their house and moved to a new small house and their new house was so small. Then his mother told them, you all sleep in one room, and me and your sister sleep in the kitchen. On the other hand, it can be seen that, the German soldiers surrounded the entire area with walls from all sides so that not a single person in this area can go out. So, everyone in there becomes unemployed overnight. A policeman known to the Spillman arrives at their home. The police told them, the Germans would employ some Jewish as policemen in this area. The police asked Spillman's brother to take up the job, but he doesn't agree. After that, Spillman also refused, he doesn't agree either. The policeman gets angry and he says, how long you will sell books and support your family? Basically, since no one had a job, then everyone supported themselves by selling books. But who will buy books during this war? Since Spillman was a celebrity pianist so he got a small job. As the days went by and the situation worsened. One day, some German soldiers came to the Spillman's front house and all the families there were asked by the German soldiers to stand up. But there was a lame man who could not stand, despite knowing this, an officer ordered the disabled man to be thrown from the top. As the soldiers do so, they drop the man and he died there. Some Jewish people came to see the dead man and the German soldiers killed them too. Day by day, the food crisis became so acute. One day, a woman was carrying some food in a tiffin box on the road. When another old man saw the tiffin box in her hand, he attacked her and a fight continues between them for a little food. At one point, the tiffin box falls out of the woman's hand and all the food in the box fell to the ground. But the old man driven by hunger, he started eating on the food lying on the road. And the woman started crying after losing her food because, she has nothing to eat. A few days later, the German soldiers made a false announcement, they said that, everyone here will be taken to another camp for work and there is very good provision of food. But they lied to everyone, the Germans were taking them to be killed. Everyone headed towards the new camp with full of hope, Spillman was also with them. He also walks with everyone, his family. They were all waiting for the train at one place and there was a boy selling chocolates, 
but he was selling a very high-priced chocolates. Spillman's family then buys a chocolate and divides it into five pieces. You can understand where the state of hunger has reached. Spillman and his family members walk to the train, then the police officer who was known to the Spillman and he took Spillman out of the crowd. But Spillman wants to go with his family, and then the police officer tells him, none of your family members will come back alive. I saved your life. By then his entire family members had boarded the train and Spillman realizes, he will never see his family again. In no time, the entire city was empty, only Spillman survives. He wept and walked the streets of the city. There were thousands of dead bodies scattered around, but most of them died of starvation. Spillman was now forced to work alongside ordinary workers. Today his luck forced him to fight for meager food. Every day a Jewish man from that camp went to the city to buy potatoes and bread. And the rest of the camp brought arms secretly from the city through this man so that, they can battle against German soldiers. The man who went to town every day, Spillman approached him and gave him a letter and requests him to deliver this letter to a Christian couple he knew in the city, and asks them if they will help Spillman if he escapes from the camp. The man came the next day with an answer to the letter and he secretly tells Spillman, they will help you. Spillman then unwrapped the batch of Jewish he had in hand and he escaped from the camp as a Christian. The couple helps Spillman. They give Spillman, food and new clothes. Spillman thinks that, after so long he got such good food and he will eat it all at once. The man arranged for him to stay in an apartment next to the camp and gives him an address. Before leaving he said, if Spillman is in dire need, he should go to this address. Several days passed like this, and the time was April 19, 1943. Spillman looks out the window of the room and he saw that, the Jewish in the camp attacked the German soldiers. But this attack does not last long. German soldiers killed all the rebels and took control of the entire camp. Meanwhile, one of his neighbor's women realizes Spillman is not a Christian. He is a Jewish and the woman wants to hand Spillman over to the German soldiers. So, having no other option, he ran away from there and he went to the address given to him by the Christian couple. He went to the front of a house and rang the calling bell. A pregnant woman opens the door. This woman was none other. She is Spillman's ex-girlfriend Dorita who we saw at the beginning of the movie, and this house belonged to her husband. Dorita says, I've been waiting a year for you. You didn't come back, I thought you were dead so I got married. Then Dorita arranged a new accommodation for him and the apartment was in front of a German hospital. Dorita's husband tells Spillman, these two servants will take care of you here, they will deliver all your food on time. Spillman remained there, but the two men brought food to him after a long time. As a result, he has not been able to eat anything for the past two weeks, so he got a bit sick. Before leaving, the man tells him, the war will soon be over. A few days passed, Dorita visits Spillman with her husband and she found Spillman very ill. But bringing a doctor here is also very risky, although Dorita then brought a doctor there. Then Dorita buys a lot of food and medicine and tells Spillman, we are leaving this area, because here is going to be an uprising very soon. Dorita leaves from there and she was right. Within a few days the rebellion started, they attacked the hospital in front of Spillman's apartment, they killed all the Germans there. But when the German soldiers came to know this news, they came there and destroyed the hospital and all the surrounding buildings with bombs. Somehow, Spillman escaped with his life. Fleeing from there Spillman reaches where, all the buildings there were destroyed. He was very hungry and he's searching for food among the ruined buildings. At one point, he finds a box of food, but it was blocked. Spillman tries hard to open the box and that's when he heard the German soldiers outside. So he hides in a place with a can of food. At nightfall, he tries to open the can again and then a German officer came from behind. Officer asks him, what are you doing here? Spillman then says, I'm trying to open this food pantry. Spillman was very scared. Then the German officer asks him, what do you do? Spillman tells the officer, I'm a pianist. The German officer then took him to a piano and asked him to play the piano. Spillman plays the piano beautifully. Hearing that, the German officer was completely impressed and he tells Spillman, I understand you are a Jewish. Don't you be afraid, I will not harm you. After that, every time when the officer came to meet Spillman he would bring him some kind of food. One day, the German officer came to see Spillman for the last time. The officer took off his jacket and gave it to Spillman and he tells him, it gets very cold here at night. I will never see you again, because the Russians will attack here very soon and all of you will be freed, so we're all getting out of here. 
Saying this, the German officer left. The next morning, Spillman found that, the war outside had stopped and he goes out from the building. But he wore the jacket given to him by the German officer and seeing this, the two women who were there ran in fear. Then the Russian soldiers started shooting at him. Then Spillman explained to them, I am not a German, I am a Jewish, I put on the jacket to protect myself from the cold. Then the Russian soldiers understand and they let him go. The scene changes and is seen that, the German soldiers are captured by the Russians, and among those prisoners was that German officer who saved Spillman's life. Some Jewish people were passing by them. Seeing this, the officer came running and he asks a Jewish man, do you know someone named Spillman? Then the Jewish man replied, Spillman is a famous pianist, everyone knows him. The German officer asks the man, if he sees Spillman to tell him that, he is in this prison. The scene changes, Spillman playing the piano very attentively. Then there came the Jewish man to whom the German officer had told about Spillman. The man approaches Spillman and talks about the German officer. As soon as Spillman heard this, he rushed to the concentration camp. But when he got there, he found it was too late, there is not a single person and all the Germans there were killed. Spillman sat down sullenly. Then it is shown that, Spillman lived until year of 2000. He dies at the age of 88 years, and the movie ends here. But, at the beginning of the movie we saw that, Spillman was a celebrity, he had no shortage of money, even after he had to fight constantly for food. Maybe, we can eat well today but we can't guarantee that, we will get proper lunch tomorrow. And if the food is wasted, God also reduces the sustenance. So let us, whether willingly or unwillingly not waste food, because children in many African countries are constantly dying for a handful of food. So far today. Thank you, thank you so much and ending today's video with one of my favorite lines from the movie. Food is more important than time.